Well, welcome to Coffee with Job on Tuesday morning. Do you know, in, in the Scottish Highlands, and particularly the island of Lewis, where my wife is from, um, they say that the constant subjects of conversation are death and the weather. Well, the book of Job, please excuse me, I feel I'm about sneezing. The book of Job is very much about death and also it does mention the weather and these are subjects we like to talk about, isn't it? Um, and what we're going to look at today has a little bit to do with death. Just in terms of weather, I mean, it's very interesting to me uh, observing the climate and climate change, as they say. I, I read this morning in the paper that Antarctica has had its coldest six months, possibly even ever. Um, I wonder how that global warming is is going. I think we're going to hear a great deal about climate, and we will hear about this also in the book of Job. So, well, <sighs> We're in chapter 13, and Job is answering his accusers, and he's saying this. Keep silent and let me speak. Then let come to me what may. Why do I put myself in jeopardy and take my life in my hands? Though he slay me, yet will I hope in him. I will surely defend my ways to his face. Indeed, this will turn out for my deliverance, for no godless person would dare to come before him. Listen carefully to what I say. Let my words ring in your ears. Now that I've prepared my case, I know I will be vindicated. Can anyone bring charges against me? If so, I will be silent and die. So Job says he's taking his life in his hands and he's saying, look, let me answer to God. Let me do this. Let me face up to God. Now, there's some question here about the translation. He, you know, th this amazing verse, though he slay me, yet will I trust him or yet will I hope in him. It is possible that it could be translated, he will slay me, I have no hope, which would fit the context. But I think the translators here have got it right in that he's saying, even though he slays me, yet I'm going to trust him. Uh, such is his faith in God. He's saying that his only hope, despite the prosperity of the wicked, despite the arbitrariness of God in nature, apparently, despite the instability and injustice of human society, he's saying, yeah, I will trust in God. And, and I think, personally, that's where I am. I mean, I mentioned the climate change stuff, and I do think that the hysteria around that is just making me despair. And then I read today the Scottish government having a campaign about cervical cancer, which was the number one cancer for women in Scotland, and they can't say women, they say people with a cervix. And as a result, there will be women who, who don't know what the cervix is, and that is apparently almost up to 50%, who, who won't go for testing. I mean, it, it's really a poor polling where all this stuff comes from. And that does make me want to despair. And then there are lots of personal things that could make you want to despair. But this is why he looks away and he looks to God. Um, this is how this works. You're watching this, you may not be a Christian. How does this work? Well, <clears throat> the Bible explains and solves Job's problem. God created the world good. Sin entered into the world and like a poison has corrupted it. There is no simple cause and effect because the poison of evil has infected everything. Man's solution is to be as good as possible, to try and build a stairway to heaven, to try and reach God but it doesn't work. It's like having a smudge on your jacket and trying to clean it, just spreading it everywhere. It's like trying to quench your thirst by drinking not coffee, but salt water. And God's wisdom and power deals with all that. And how? I'm going to refer you to two passages. I won't read them, but if you have time, please do. 1 Corinthians 1, 18 to 25, talks about the wisdom of God in Christ, that God sent his son Jesus to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. In that way, he, he, he dies in our place, he suffers the punishment we deserve, and in that way, he opens the way for us to be clean and to remain human, to have our sin removed and punished without us being destroyed. That's the wisdom of Christ. Or Romans 8, 31 to 39, if God be for us, then who can be against us? All the forces of nature, all the actions of rulers can never separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. So Job's hope in the midst of a phenomenal despair 
is that though he slay me, yet I will trust him, yet I will put my hope in him. And our hope in the midst of a broken world, and many of us perhaps struggling with, with broken relationships or broken lives or broken bodies in different ways, you can still say this. You can still say, though he slay me, yet I will trust him. If you're a believer, and if you're not a believer, what have you got? You've got nothing that can heal your brokenness. You can only whitewash it. You can't heal it, but God can. So, see you tomorrow. Have a good day, and I hope it's sunnier wherever you are.